My dear people of Ambazonia, my fellow brave warriors of our liberation movement, my dear people of the Southern Cameroons, accept liberation greetings from me, Comrade John Akuro, this day. Today is Thursday, and today is uh, the 17th day of the month of October 2024. The last time I was here on this platform, I talked about the situation of the ailing non nigerian genocide president of La Republic du Cameroon, of neighboring La Republic du Cameroon. And uh, I noted that uh, much as Mr. Paul Beer has played this kind of tricks in the past, and, uh, you know, at approach of uh, elections, or so when his candidature is considered uh, controversial, I noted that this time around, the stakes and the dynamics were totally different. And I pointed out the number of reasons, I mean, which were really strong reasons, both economic, political, cultural, and social, that, uh, you know, did come into play. Today, on the economic front, the situation has not changed. It's rather getting worse. Yet, Mr. Paul Bia is not showing up. This morning, I had the pleasure of watching uh, a show on France 24, on which the French-based television station literally, I mean literally, declared vacancy at the helm of power in La République du Cameroon. If you follow the discussions keenly, France 24 even goes as far as affirming that normally 45 days after the President of the Republic stays out of the country, there is naturally supposed to be declared a vacancy. Don't forget, it's true that this provision might have been omitted from the Constitution, but always recall that the Constitution of La Republique du Cameroon for too many years has always been a replica of the French Constitution. But today that provision does not clearly exist in the uh, Constitution of La Republique du Cameroon. However, in international circles, it is considered unheard of and almost an aberration that the president of a country could be out this long. Let me take us back to the avalanche of press releases. Of course, which press releases the panelists from France Vincard also make clear only add to the confusion and do not clarify anything, do not help in any way. This is also why the Committee to Protect Journalists says clearly that outlawing any discussion about Mr. Paul Bia's state of health or his death or his whatever is nonsense. And they say the only way that could happen would be for Mr. Paul Bia to do what the Malawian president did on camera. We saw the Malawian president on the streets doing gymnastics, jumping, skipping, you know, doing push-ups and all of those to demonstrate that he was in very sound health. So the Committee to Protect Journalists simply said Mr. Pobia should show a sign of life. He should make a public appearance to dispel all those rumors. Of course, that has not happened. Or it is yet to happen. It hasn't happened because it is not possible for it to happen. And so I was saying this, that let's go back uh, a little to exactly what has been going on. We saw... Uh, um, a post from what uh, Martin, Martin Luther Mecca on, on Facebook where he purported that Mr. Paul Bia was expected back in the country on the 16th. That was yesterday. And he even went as far as giving 10 o'clock. Others went ahead to say he was going to appear, he was going to land at Simalan Airport this Thursday at 11 o'clock. That has yet to happen. But again, as I pointed out, the situation is so dicey. Dicey this time because on the economic front, La Republic du Cameroon should at this time be working at the, with Parliament to vote the budget, the state budget for the year 2025. Focus is not on that. Focus at this point on time is rather on the head of state's state of health. Focus right now is on the confusion that is likely to ensue once it becomes very clear that Mr. Paul Bia is either totally incapacitated or is even dead. 
So that is sending a lot of shock waves in the spines of the economic sector, both locally and internationally. I noted here the last time that the euro bonds and dollar bonds of La Republic du Cameroon were having a free fall on the international market. That is even getting worse. A lot of the holders of Cameroon's euro bonds and dollar bonds are disposing of them now at horrible prices. This is because of the uncertainty that is in the air right now. That is not all. You know, international finance bodies doing business with Cameroon are also getting extremely worried because in a situation where there is total confusion and the members of parliament and of the Senate do not come together to sit down to work on a state budget, put in place a state budget to clarify how the country is going to function in 2025 and how their international financial engagements are going to be respected, then things get a bit more confusing. And a lot of these bodies fear they may lose the money that they lent out to the government of Cameroon. This means that if Cameroon at this point in time were to be facing challenges, paying or uh, their engagements, either salaries or whatsoever, and want to go out there to get any loans, that is going to be complicated. It's going to be complicated. And this is so bad for a country that we know has lived in the past few years exclusively on international indebtedness. So this is something to, to note. I point this out so you understand that because of the very high stakes, if Mr. Paul Bia were playing his usual tricks, he should already have brought that trick to an end. But the fact that he has not brought that trick to an end right now, and that a Tudi or Yawundi has not succeeded in making him show up anywhere or make a statement anywhere or just show his face somewhere just for even five or ten minutes, it's clear they are unable to do it. It's clear the doctors who have facilitated this in the past find it extremely challenging right now to do it. And internal sources in La Republique du Cameroon point out that 90% of Mr. Paul Bia's ministers are in the dark as to exactly what is going on with him and his health. For that reason, too many members of government are right now engaged in what you call capital flight. A lot of money is leaving La Republique du Cameroon right now into foreign banks. I mean a lot of money. People are taking measures to safeguard tomorrow because no one knows exactly how tomorrow will look like. That is not all. A lot of the members of government and top government officials who have the possibility to do so have been shipping their very close family members, children, wives and others, out of the country, I mean in huge numbers as we speak. While they are doing this, they continue putting up a face to deceive the people to think that everything is normal and the situation is under control. They also fear mass exodus. That is why my people of Amazonia, I don't miss the opportunity to draw the attention of our denizens that are still in La Republique du Cameroon or that are doing business in La Republique du Cameroon. You have your money in the banks there, make hay where the sun shines. You have your earnings in any place where you can collect, make hay where the sun shines. You have the possibility to transfer some of the operations of your business out of La Republique du Cameroon so you can continue at least to stay solvent. When the crisis really gets full gear, don't waste any time. For those of our citizens of the Southern Cameroons, a.k.a. Amazonia, who are still in the hinterlands of La Republique du Cameroon, I said it before, and I'm repeating it now. It is time to run home before it becomes very complicated for you to leave. This I say in earnest and I say in good faith. I'm not trying to create panic. I'm painting the situation exactly as it is. And I'm also speaking from the things that I hear. Because if you get to understand that right now, the First Lady of La Republique du Cameroon, Mrs. Chantal Bia, herself is afraid to return to the country unless she gets certain guarantees. This should tell you exactly where you stand. Because today, I got information from very trusted security sources in La Republique du Cameroon that viewing what happened to the First Lady of Gabon, 
Ms. Chanta Bia is making clear she will not return to La République du Cameroon unless she has assurances that Frank, Frank Bia, will be the next president. She even went as far, according to these uh, security sources, as, uh, as, as, as far as indicating that if push came to shove, she wouldn't hesitate to favor a situation where her husband, the president of La République du Cameroon, is buried in Switzerland if he came to die there. This is because the medical doctors in Switzerland have observed that Mr. Paul Bia's situation is at this point quite desperate and nothing can be done. And so they had even advised that they should take him back home and wait there for the ultimate to happen. You know how it happens in the West? In the West, you get to a certain state and they notice that right now, medically, there is nothing that can be done to bring you back to where you were. So they simply advise you to get into hospice care. Get into hospice care meaning means that you have already accepted the reality of death. And so you know that any moment this is going to happen. So you go into hospice care where they prepare you gradually, prepare the family for what is going to come, prepare everyone for the eventual loss. This is exactly the state in which the former U.S. president, Mr. Jimmy Carter, is found in. At a hundred years and counting, he is moved already into hospice care in a developed country like the United States of America, where he could have all the family care and everything from home or in a hospital. But they, did, but they understand what this means. This is in a place where people accept that they are mortal. In La Republic du Cameroon, people are yet to come to terms with the reality that Mr. Paul Bia is a mere mortal who is called upon to live and also called upon to die like every other human being. But because they have refused to accept this, and because that country has operated for the past 42 years on a principle of make-believe, they are yet to come to terms with reality. And so, the situation continues to get dicey. I saw reports on social media indicating that the presidential family actually left the Intercontinental Hotel and I went out to find out or to establish the veracity of that statement. Of course, some of the sources that uh, I reached out, out to say they were not totally confirming, but they at least had an idea that the cash flow to Switzerland had literally stopped because of challenges in disbursement from the SNH, that's the National Hydrocarbons Corporation, to Switzerland. And so it was possible, it was definitely possible that a majority of the people who were not really connected to assisting, that's in any way, to assisting Mr. Paul Bia in his current health situation will have to leave the Intercontinental Hotel to avoid creating bills and leaving a debt. And so, which means that somewhere along the line, this could be true, but I'm not confirming just yet until I get the rest of the information I am seeking. And also... We have heard about a Bombardier jet that left Luxembourg and eventually landed in Yaoundé at the Simalen International Airport. That Bombardier jet is what we call an air ambulance. Air ambulance means just like the local ambulances that we have, that when there's a medical emergency, they will come rush you in so they could take you in conditions that they follow you up to make sure that you are receiving some kind of medical uh uh, uh, assistance while they are taking you to the hospital. So that's how they move patients whose situations are really bad. So the air ambulance is of course simply the counterpart of the normal ambulance that you know. And so they say this air ambulance normally will be used for VIPs for the case of Cameroon. And that uh, it finally landed at Simalen International Airport yesterday. And um, the last time I checked it seems uh, that, air, that aircraft uh, was still was yet to leave, but was not aimed at going back to Switzerland. So mystery still exists as to who could be the occupant of that aircraft. But internal discussions again that have been disclosed to me can help us to begin guessing the identity of the VIP that was in that aircraft. Because from internal discussions, a lot has been made to try, a lot of efforts have been made to try and convince the Lamido of Ray Buba, and I discussed it here the last time, to resign as the first vice president of the Senate so that it will pave the way for Mr. Robin Kili, who is the uncle to Frank Bia, 
to become the next in line after Nyat Njifenji Marcel, who himself is in very bad shape of health, so that he will be the one to lead the transition, and then they will have the certainty that he will do what it will take in collaboration with France to get either Frank Bia or Louis Paul Mortazé, but especially Frank Bia to become the next president of La Republique du Cameroon. So, the Lamido of Ray Buba totally rejected that option. Recently, we were told that he was called to Switzerland or that he went to Switzerland leading a parliamentary delegation to attend an inter-parliamentary session that was taking place in Switzerland. Of course, we have pictures of him who was there with uh, Von Chaffa and another lady from the Senate. But the underling is that actually he had to head that delegation because they needed to have him in Switzerland closely with the members of the presidential family to try a last-ditch effort to convince the Lamido of Ray Buba to step down in favor of Robin Kili becoming the one to manage the transition. Basically because they had come to the conclusion that Marcel Nyat Njifenji is vegetable. Now, to the mystery of the Bombardier jet that is at the Simalen International Airport. It would appear that after they failed woefully to convince the Lamido of Ray Buba it dawned on them that they might as well do what they have done always. That is bring a dead walking man like Marcel Nyadjifendi, get him installed as the interim president, and even on his dying bed, get him to go ahead and manage the transition and validate Frank Bia as the next president. And so it is possible, I say possible, from internal discussions in the Republic of Cameroon, that the VIP that arrived at the, in the Simalene International Airport in that uh, uh, special uh, Bombardier jet, which is an air ambulance, will be Nyat Njifenji Marcel. The days ahead will reveal, but again, don't forget that nature has a very dazzling way of handling this kind of things. So if I take us back to the conversation we saw on Franz Venkat this morning, it is obvious that the international community in the days ahead will be expecting that the Constitutional Council of La Republique du Cameroon, headed by another dead walking man, Diedone Isomba, I don't I think I'm even forgetting the the the, the name, because I'm mixing up by calling Diedone uh, Isomba. So this other dead walking man who is president of the uh, National Constitutional Council of La Republic du Cameroon is expected in the days ahead by the international communities, I'm not talking of La Republic du, du, du Cameroon, to at least declare a vacancy at the helm of power in La Republic du Cameroon. And if that is done, according to constitutional norms, the Prime Minister, head of government, who is John Ngute Joseph, who according to Article 10, Sub 3, of the Constitution of La Republique du Cameroon be the next in line to run the government of La Republique du Cameroon until Mr. Paul Bia regains his full capacity to run the state. That is in the case where they are simply observing that right now he is, he is unavoidably absent because of ill health. Because take note, as President of the Republic, Mr. Paul Bia could even be out there for six, eight, nine, ten months taking care of his health. And if that is done, of course, they will do the needful, which is indicating that he is indisposed for health reasons and so has gone to take care of his health. In this case, I'm trying to, to correct myself, walk back what I said because uh, a while ago I almost mixed it up. I want to re-clarify it. So in the case where they establish that Mr. Paul Beer is not in a good state of health to run the state and needs a prolonged period of, of time to get medical attention, the next thing that happens is that according to Article 10 Sub 3, the Prime Minister of the Republic is next in line to whom the President of the Republic will delegate his functions to manage the affairs of the state until that time when he regains his health and comes back to take over. That is what is supposed to happen. And that is what the only thing that can justify a prolonged stay of the head of state out of the country. 
Otherwise, the other thing would be that the communique issued by the director of the civil cabinet misleads by giving the impression he's in very good health, he's in Switzerland, and is continuing to discharge his duties of head of state. His duty post is Yaoundé, not Switzerland. This is something to note, therefore. But because La République du Cameroon system right now, they don't trust anybody from any other tribe apart from the Beti tribe to go closer to the helm of power, to manage anything in that country, this is why there is total obscurity. There is so much right ahead. I mean, so much right ahead. And as soon as I get information or answers to all the questions I've sent to my sources within the structures of La Republic du Cameroon, I will be right back here to update everyone. This discussion has gone on for 20 minutes. I didn't want it to even get right up to this point. And so I want to wish everyone well. And I'm insisting on this. Fellow Southern Cameroonians, a.k.a. Ambazonians who are in La Republic du Cameroon, take measures. Make hay while the sun shines. Don't allow yourself to be trapped. If you have any money in any bank in La Republic du Cameroon, especially banks that have connections to France, collect your money while it is still possible to god be the glory thank you for your kind attention